Glory to God. As you're joining in, share this broadcast and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's award. I give you glory, Father. Now, as you're joining in, we're talking in depth about this subject. We're talking about the prophet of God, how the prophet of God is sent into your life and the, the vocal focus of the prophet's presence and what it all means. Because that prophet is carrying eternal life in him for you. In Hosea chapter 12, verse 13 says, by a prophet was the people of God, Israel brought out, by a prophet was Israel preserved. So they're being preserved by the prophet, protected. They're being brought out of satanic lifestyle and then they're being protected from going back to satanic lifestyle because of the prophet. So when the prophet is in your life, the prophet is teaching your soul righteousness, goodness, obedience, so that it won't choose sin, so that it won't choose to go backwards, so that when it choose to follow the ways of the flesh or the ways that you formerly operated in, the, the prophet is assigned to impart to your soul different assignments in the Holy Ghost so that your mind could think about certain things, so that you could meditate on divine words from the Father, words of life. Uh, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 says that he that won't hear the law, even his prayers are abomination. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 says that he that won't hear the law, even his prayer is an abomination. You know what the law is? The instructions of God, the words of God. It said if he won't hear that, even his prayer is an abomination to God. So, so when a prophet is in your life, if you disregard the instruction, God not dealing with you. Because that's your prophet. That's the person that God is flowing through his voice to talk to you. In John chapter 10, King Jesus kept emphasizing, my sheep, they hear my voice. They know my voice. So, so what King Jesus is saying, whenever I talk, my true people will recognize that as me talking. See, when you're truly the Lord Jesus' woman or man, you will hear him talking in your prophet. You'll recognize him in another one you will not follow. You won't allow yourself to be clouded with evil or wrong or contrary thoughts, ways. You would adapt to what that prophet is saying. If we look at the story of Elisha, he's stuck by his prophet of God. He didn't go to the left or to the right, and he was never out of tune with his prophet of God. He learned from prophet Elijah, he walked with prophet Elijah, and he fulfilled prophet Elijah's instructions for his life. Whenever you are operating with your prophet, now you're having a, a golden opportunity to show God the pureness of your heart. You're, 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 you're being given a chance now to offer up the sacrifice of praise, to offer up the sacrifice of obedience. You're able to live for the Lord through your prophet. Now, saints, when the prophet of God comes, the Lord wants you to receive the laws of honor. Wants to receive the laws of worship, receive the laws of humility. When you humble yourself, the profit in your relationship goes to the next degree of glory. When you humble yourself, now the profit is unlocked to give you more things that the father wants you to have from that profit, from your profit. When your prophet is ministering to you, they can only give you the level of impartation according to the level of your humility. The level of your impartation from your prophet is dependent on your level of humility and fear of the Lord. If you resist your prophet, 
the prophet not allowed to give you the totality of what he was assigned to give you. Lowering yourself is a divine mentality and attitude, perspective and response to your prophet of God. If you pit yourself in that humility place, promotion will come through your servanthood to your prophet. If you pit yourself in humility, you will receive promotion from God, exaltation from God. Now, saints, one of the powerful things about exaltation and promotion, you often think about it as the outward, you being celebrated. But promotion actually also deals with the mind. So when you're promoted by God, God speaks to you in a new aspect mentally. When you're promoted, your emotions receive new wisdom and new strength, how to stay in joy, how to stay in peace, how to stay in sanity, how to stay in soundness. When you are promoted by the father, even your health decisions, you start realizing what is good for your body. You start realizing what is good for your health. See, promotion, there's an inward benefit that happens when you're promoted. See, we often think about promotion as if, okay, you get lifted up on the outside and people see that you're great and people see that you're favored and people see that things are going well for you. But there's also an inward promotion where God talks to you differently. He entrusts you with the depths of his knowledge. He believes that you can handle deeper conversations, deeper revelation, deeper instructions, corrections. And so when you get promoted, God deems you mature. So he talks to you as if you can handle him. When God promotes you, he also is not expecting the former mistakes to spring up and become a habit. Because remember, promotion means you are being rewarded because you have adapted to excellence. Wow. Wow. Reward means that you have adapted to excellence. So remember, you're not supposed to go backwards. You're supposed to go forward. When you adapt to excellence, God promotes you. So humility is really the adaptation to excellence. Is the adaptation to your profit. Is the adaptation to um the instruction that you're giving out of your prophet. You cannot be promoted by God without serving your prophet of God. You can't. God promotes you by how you deal with your prophet. The blessing of Abraham flows via your prophet of God. You can't live in the manifestation of the blessing of Abraham without your prophet of God. You can't flow in the blessing of the Lord without your prophet of God. God has hidden the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of the Lord in your prophet of God. Your prophet of God is operating as a Christ to you. They are an anointed one and they are the anointing of God teaching you the word. Remember, the anointing is the words that God will teach you. We know that from 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Words become manifestation. That's why we see miracles, casting out devils, healing, and all those different types of things that move. So when the prophet is, is right there in your presence, you are now receiving a grace to walk in humility. The humility has your promotion in it. The humility is your receptivity of what the prophet will teach you, reveal to you, let you know. You never compare yourself to your prophet. Your prophet is not an object of comparison. Your prophet's life in your life is not the same. Your prophet is sent you are de to discern that they're sent. You're not sent to your prophet. Your prophet is sent to you. 
You don't pick your prophet. Your prophet picks you. Wow. Jesus. Your prophet is the one that calls you to himself. Because you are to serve him and help him to bring pleasure to his life, to bring assistance to his assignment, completion to his vision. The prophet anoints you so that you could be able to perform your duties to your prophet. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Let's go here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. A prophet is a wise man. A prophet, your prophet is a God in the flesh. And if you will take what they have for you, the supernaturality of yourself will come forth. You will see yourself thinking and doing different things from the norm. You'll have boldness to walk in spiritual abilities. There's an angelic transference that happens every time you listen to your prophet. When your prophet gives you an instruction, you do it. When the prophet teaches you things and you adapt to the teaching, there's angels increasing in your life. There's an influx of angels. Angels travel to your life off of your reaction of obedience and honor to your prophet. When a prophet come into your life, you help the prophet. You protect the prophet. You inspire the prophet. You respect your prophet. You do what your prophet asks of you to do. You push his ministry. Your prophet needs your undivided attention. Your prophet needs your undivided loyalty. Your prophet needs your heart pure so that the prophet don't have to keep on delivering you from the same thing that he delivered you from already. Your prophet needs your maintenance. Your maintenance means that you are sustaining the information you have learned and you keep on being active in doing it and demonstrating it. You, you have to keep yourself in the mindset that I'm not going to become lukewarm with what my prophet teaches me. I'm not going to let it be, uh, uh, be taken from me or fall by the wayside. I'm going to perform it. I'm going to complete it. I'm going to continue in it. And I'm going to make sure that I fulfill the art of everything that's been spoken to me. When your prophet is talking to you, your prophet is giving you a way of life that will bring you abundant life in this body. God cannot be your friend if your prophet is your enemy. Just remember that. Just remember that. God cannot be your friend if your prophet is your enemy. Remember what I'm saying right here, people of God. If your prophet is your enemy, you pit your prophet in a boat of enemy, God cannot be your friend. Remember, your prophet is God in a body. So if God comes to you in a body and talks to you, you disrespect God, this is what you're doing to God. So how are you going to come to God in spirit? Oh, Lord, 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 I need you. I want you. I'm hungry for you. I want your will for my life. Lord, whatever you got to do in me. The Lord looking at you like, Because your prophet is doing that very thing that you're praying about. The prophet is there to expose the will of God to you. Now, when your prophet comes into your life, every false relationship will come under fire. When your prophet comes into your life, every false relationship will come under fire. If you get married and you're not supposed to be married, your marriage about to have the worst time of its life because God will shake up that marriage. If you move to a city and you're not supposed to move to that city, 
you about to have the storm of your life in that city. When your prophet of God comes, this is the judgment of God. God showing you the decision that he has made towards you. So you'll have to, you'll, you'll have to start realizing some of these trials that's happening to me is God now opening and awakening my eyes to see what he didn't want in the first place. No relationship can stand that's not of God once you come into relationship with your prophet because your prophet is going to release a saturation of God's will all around your hemisphere. Your prophet is going to release a saturation of God's will all over your hemisphere. When your prophet comes to your life, you might got children, you might got parents, you got might got marriages that's not of God. You'll see that there's a shaking that goes on. A lot of people, they run from the shaking instead of sticking with the prophet. They run with the shaking. Let me tell you something. Running with the shaking is not going to set you free. Running with the prophet is what sets you free. Your prophet of God is going to be the one that the father used to divide you from the satanic kingdom, to cut off the satanic cord, to destroy the satanic altar. If you remember, it's Elijah that's destroying the altar of the prophets of Baal. It takes a prophet to do this. The prophet of God is shutting down this doctrine, this system that has been formed by Jezebel. And this is Jezebel's prophets. And this system is not of God. This information, not of God. These, these things that's going on, not of God. This organization, not of God. And the prophet is there to expose it and destroy it. When your prophet comes, it's for a shaking of God to occur. That's why the prophet comes. So that God could shake up things that's not of him. Whatever is not of God, when your prophet comes on the scene, that thing will get burnt up if you want God's will. If you don't want God's will, you'll go with the thing and leave the prophet. If you want God's will, you'll stay with the prophet and leave the thing. You see what I'm saying? Remember, Lot's wife looked back. But Lot wants God's will, so he has to go forward with his prophet Abraham. Hallelujah. Rebeku Ramande de Rebo Rabasanda. Randa Ramando Romosia. Rebekira Rabaso. Rende de Rebo Sanda Lemonda. Saints, did you catch that right there? Lot's wife, he looked back. Uh, Lot's wife looked back, but Lot had to go forward with his prophet Abraham. You notice Lot couldn't stay there and try to say, no, baby, no, baby. He had to go forward with Abraham. That's what goes on when there is your prophet manifesting in your life. The prophet is manifesting in your life because God is saying, now I want your life to look the way that I want it to be. And I want to shift things the way that it's supposed to be so that you could enjoy all the things that I have planned for you. Now, saints, uh, let's go here to Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. The prophet of God is the most important relationship in your life. Your prophet is the most important relationship in your life. Most important. Because this relationship is dealing with eternity. You can have relationship with your children. They're not getting you into heaven. You can have relationship with your parents. They're not getting you into heaven. You can have relationship with your neighbor. It's not getting you into heaven. You can have relationship with your wife, your husband. Don't get you into heaven. Your most important relationship in this life is with your prophet of God. Anybody. Anybody. Because this is the relationship that's dealing with your soul being set free from the powers of darkness. This is the relationship of your soul being set free from demonic spirits. This is the relationship that come to break up the follow ground so that righteousness can reign in your members, so that your body can serve God, so that your body can glorify God. This is the relationship where you learn how to respect the father. You respect the father. 
You respect the father in your finances, respect the father in your, your reactions, your responses, your behavior, your words, your mentality, how you spend your time. This relationship with your prophet is where you learn how not to be idle and disrespectful to God with your schedule. You learn what you need to break off. You learn what is unnecessary. When you meet your prophet, you learn a work ethic. Your prophet breaks the spirit of laziness. A lot of times people are so involved in saying, God going to work this out for me. God going to work this out for me that they never work. The prophet of God come to break the spirit of laziness. Remember Elisha, he gives him assignment. Now Elisha is working with Elijah. Remember Moses, he given the children of Israel assignments. He given Joshua an assignment. Give Caleb an assignment. Give the men an assignment. They go look into the land. Most of them came back with bad report, over 10 of them. But two of them is now saying, Joshua and Caleb, we shall surely take the land. The prophet comes to unlock you into your assignment, your work ethic. So when your prophet is in your life, servanthood will begin to flow out of you. Say servanthood is how you unlock money. Servanthood is how you unlock a paycheck. The ability to serve causes you to have favor with somebody on earth that can pay you. A boss, a manager. When your prophet comes, you will learn the grace and the etiquette of how to unlock money. How to submit yourself to even other authorities. The power of the authority of your prophet is that your prophet is also going to show you how to be respectful in environments where you usually will be hostile. You know, sometimes how people think I got a right to be like this, but the prophet will come and speak sense from God in your soul so that you can move in the spirit of a sound mind so that you can have the wisdom of how to deal with situations correctly. You know, sometimes you could be hot headed. The prophet of God gives you an anointing of self-control. The prophet of God shows you the fruit of temperance. You know, the fruit of temperance in Galatians chapter uh, uh, five, Galatians chapter five, the fruit of temperance is dealing with your temper, your attitude, um, your, your ability to be um, restrained to not be compulsive. You know, uh, the flesh is real combative if it thinks that it's not being respected. The flesh gets real combative if it thinks that it's not being uh, uh, spoken to correctly. And, and you want to act out. You want to defend yourself, protect your dignity. But see, humility is not about you. It's about God. When you in humility, it's not about Oh, I, I want to feel like I'm being respected. You want to make sure God is respected and he can get what he wants out of you in that moment. See, true humility is when God could be able to get pleasure out of your behavior, even if you want to respond differently. A lot of people have never learned what humility is because you adapt to how you feel. Which is really pride. Because if God could be in a body and take the beating of man and then it beat them back, they spit on King Jesus and he didn't spit on them back. And then he takes all this crucifixion and never spoke another uh, a railing word. So what's going on here? We're seeing the nature of temperance, the fruit of the spirit, which is in Galatians 5, verse 22 and all on is, is dealing with the fruit of temperance, the ability to walk in um, uh, calmness, the ability to walk in uh, maturity, uh, self-restraint, self-control. And so what we're seeing with King Jesus that he didn't even allow himself to operate in feelings. He got it done, right? Because he's, he's walking in the fruit of the spirit. When the prophet of God is in your life, they come into your life. This is your opportunity to bear fruit unto salvation 
What does that mean? Bearing the fruit that brings you into deliverance. While you're bearing this fruit, you get delivered from old ways, old altars, old sacrifices that people used to make to the devil. What's a sacrifice to the devil? That means that you go out of your way to do what the devil wants you to do. And generations before you be going out their way to do what the devil wants them to do. And so when you come into the generation, you come and you want to do the same thing. You want to go and do what makes you feel good and what you feel is right. And it's a continuation of ungodliness and wickedness. So when you bear the fruits that are unto salvation, you're doing what God wants you to do. You're behaving the way he wants you to behave. And it sets you free from demonic traits, characteristics, thoughts, ways, perspectives, opinions, reactions. See, your deliverance is in doing something. A lot of people, they say, well, I'm delivered. Well, how do you know that you're delivered until you're tested? If you're someone that got attitudes and you're in a place in your life where your patience is not being stretched, you don't know if your attitude demon is gone. You're going to know if your attitude demon is gone when you get in a situation where you have to exert patience and now you can see if your attitude demon is gone. Le son de le the same way, if you're struggling with lust, you, can't, you don't know if your lust demon is gone until someone from your past or someone that you're not supposed to be sleeping with, connected with, come on the scene and say, oh, hey, baby, y'all talking together. See, your lust demon not gone. Are you seeing this? A lot of times people remain demon possessed, even though their prophet has come on the scene to set them free from that demon. And the demon laughs at you because the demon knows the prophet is there to evict me. But if I could get you away from listening to the prophet, then I could stay. So a lot of times there are people that are being laughed at in the spirit realm. Demons laugh at you when you disobey your prophet. I'm going to teach real heavy on here. Demons laugh, on you, laugh at you when you disobey your prophet. When you don't do what your prophet say, they laugh at you. So you might go over to the left, over to the right, might go all over the place, might do what make you feel like you respected and make you feel like you being celebrated. But at the end of the day, you don't have spiritual authority. If you use the blood of Jesus and you're not in good alignment with your prophet of God, it's not working. If you pray and you're not in alignment with your prophet of God, God ain't hearing your prayer. God give you the prophet for you to work with the prophet and that's going to be the way in which you progress in the spirit. You get free in the spirit. You get favor in the spirit. You get out of the flesh and in the spirit. There are managers at workplaces that if they assign people to work together and the person don't work with their coworker, the boss won't even acknowledge anything that they do. Because the boss will say, I told you to work with her. So don't come show me your works. Go do what I say. I sent both of y'all together to work together. Y'all come and bring the work together. There are bosses like that in the workplace. That if they assign you to work with your coworker and you try to sneak and show your work and say, hey, boss, I did this. The boss going to say, well, where, where's Carly's work? I told you to work with Carly. So come on with Carly, and that's why I want to grade y'all together. I don't want you to bring nothing solo. That's your partner. Go help her. Well, that's how it is in the spirit. The father releases order. He gives you a prophet because he's saying, this is how I want to work with you. This is how I want to talk with you. This is how I want to train you. This is how I want to prepare you for eternal life. This is how I want to deal with you in this body. I want you to learn what I need you to learn. I need you to help me while you're learning because everything I'm teaching you is for you to understand what I need from you in your servanthood. Everything I'm teaching you is to show you what is your assignment to me. See, saints, the prophet of God will teach you what is your duty towards him. So the prophet won't even leave you ignorant. The prophet will tell you what is lacking in his assignment. The prophet will tell you how to guard yourself from any old demons revisiting you and re-entering you. If you're going to win the battle in the spirit realm, you cannot win it without your prophet. You can't. 
You can't. You can't win. You can't win the battle against the gates of hell without your prophet of God. You can't win it. I won't go to Matthew chapter 10 here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 10. Let's go here. Matthew chapter 10 verse. Let's go to verse 37. It says he. It says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, which is a very powerful statement. You can't love your parents more than the Lord Jesus, because if they tell you to do something opposite uh, to the will of Jesus for your life, Jesus has already come to you and shown you what he wants for you. If you go into that realm of Agreement with your parents, you're not worthy of King Jesus. And then when we see it says that he that loveth son and daughter more than me are not worthy of me. That means that if the Lord is calling you away from your son and daughter and you cling to them, you cater to them, you follow their way, you, 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 you worship them, you follow their path. He's saying you're not worthy of me. So every, 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 every time you get into this place where it's like you can overdo some things with uh, parents or, or, or children, remember this, that the Lord wants all of your heart. You can't sacrifice saying, oh, this is my son, this is my daughter, oh, this is my mother, this is my father, and not do the will of the father. You got to get God's will done. It said that he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Um, in that case, remember when, uh, remember uh, when Samson, Samson was in a situation where his parents didn't know uh, what God was doing with the Philistine camp to him getting with that certain woman. Remember the Bible said that they didn't know what God was doing. Now that's a case of, not loving your mother and father more than me, that you love the Lord more than your mother and father because Samson in that case had to sneak up into the Philistine um, uh, situation so that he can defeat the enemies of God. So it was a strategy God was using. And then um, when they say love your, your daughter and son more than me, you're not worthy of me. A, a case of that is when Hannah has Samuel, Remember, Hannah offers up Samuel to Eli. Eli is a priest, but he like a prophet. He understands the prophetic anointing. You notice what she does. Hannah has to give up her son to Eli. Think about that. Hannah has to give up her son to Eli. Eli is the sacrifice place where she gives her son Samuel and say, I know that this is the will of God. So here she didn't take Samuel home with her. She didn't have Elkanah and, and her raise Samuel. She let Eli raise Samuel because that was the will of God. In that case, you see the scripture fulfilled in both of those scenarios. If you love mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love son and daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. A lot of people don't talk about this here, but when you follow in Jesus, Jesus would have you leave your children. I'm going to say it again. When you follow in Jesus, Jesus would have you leave your children. You can't do this in yourself. You can't say, I'm leaving my children because I don't want them. No, no, no. When you follow in Jesus, Jesus would lead you away from your children. And I'm talking about children according to the natural. Because if they were children according to the spirit, he wouldn't have to have you leave them. And I'm going to say that again. If they were children according to the spirit, but they're only children, they're only your children according to flesh. Meaning you had sex with a man or sex with a woman, you birthed those children and they came forth according to the flesh, they are yours. If they are not your children according to the spirit, God will call you away from them. And I want you to always remember that. That's a raw anointing, but that is the honest to God truth. So 
when God makes that decision in your life, don't fight him because he knows the beginning from the end. There's always many reasons that you can't see why God disconnects you from people that you originally thought should be in your life. Always surrender. See, we dealing with when your prophet comes into your life, everything is going to shift. Everything is going to change. And Satan, his worst nightmare is when you unite with your prophet and agree with your prophet because now you're allowing the change to happen. If you go against the prophet, you set in your life in delays and Satan don't want you to have your money. He don't want you to have your life in the spirit. He don't want you to have success. He don't want you to prosper. So Satan wants you to mess up so Satan can have the authority still and have the driver's seat of your life. Remember when, when uh, prophet Elijah called Elisha. Elisha has to run quickly. All right. Let's go to first Kings chapter 19, verse 19. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Let's go to first Kings chapter 19. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 19, verse 19 says, so Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. Look what it says. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Look at this. And verse, verse 19 says that Elijah, he went up to Elisha and threw his cloak around him, his anointing, his mantle, a point of contact. The cloak represented the power of God that was on Elijah, everything that God had taught Elijah, that cloak was just an object that represented that Elijah was anointed. I want some of y'all to always remember that. A mantle, it, 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 it signifies that God has established power on a man. And so, so a mantle means that this individual has been saturated in an ability, in a thought life that God has given to him. And God has taken over the brain of this individual to think in a way that produces fruit, miracles, manifestation, lifestyles, kingdom of heaven, all those different type of things, results. Now look at this here. In verse 20, it says, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. That's verse 20. First Kings chapter 19, verse 20 said that Elisha left his oxygen, his oxen and ran after Elijah. Look, Elisha left what he was doing. Now, I want to show you something that you probably never heard this like this before. After he left what he was doing, look at how his mind goes into warfare immediately. Watch. The Bible says that he left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Now he's going after Elijah's desire, Elijah's will for his life, Elijah's instruction, Elijah's teaching and mentorship. Now watch this. The Bible says Elisha left and ran after Elijah. And then he said, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. Wow. Remember, we just read that text that said, if you love mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. Now, it's just dealing with you can't have nobody above God when he's calling you. 
When he's calling you, you can't say, oh, my wife, oh, my husband, oh, my, my children, oh, my mama, oh, my father, oh, my auntie, oh, my cousin. You can't pit nobody above the calling of God. Nobody. I've heard people use different doctrines. You pit your family first. You pit the ministry first. You pit, listen, you'll pit nine first. The Holy Ghost is number one. That's, the, that's all that matters. The Holy Ghost is number one. The Holy Ghost ain't going to tell you to do wrong. We can't say picture ministry first because most people, their ministry is a lie. We can't say picture marriage first because most people, their marriage is a lie. So we can't pick no bracket and say ministry first or family first because some people, their family is a lie. What I'm saying is it's not legit. God don't see it as no real family. So, and, and some people ministry is not legit. God don't see it as a real ministry because he didn't birth it. He didn't send it out. So the, the real safety in life is Holy Ghost is number one. I'm going to acknowledge the Lord in all my ways. and I'm going to let him direct my path. That's Proverbs chapter three. That's the safest law. Seeking God and letting him reveal to you what he wants. Now watch this here. Elisha ran after Elijah, verse 20. And then he's, he remembers this and says, let me kiss my mother and father goodbye. And then he said, watch this. I'm going to kiss them goodbye. Then I will come with you. I'm going to go with you. Watch this. Elijah said, go back. What have I done to you? El oh my God, Jesus. Elijah is asking Elisha, what have I done to you for you to go back to what I'm delivering you from? Elijah's response was not, go, okay, go, go, go tell your mama goodbye. Yeah, go kiss mama. Go kiss father. Elijah said, you going back. What did I do for you to go back? Since the fact that Elijah asked him this, Elijah's saying, it's not God's will for you to go kiss them. So the fact that you still want to do something that's God's will, what did I do to you? To make you go back to Satan's schedule. Rebeku samande le manda. Randa ramanda ramaso. Rebekere de vos. Re de viso lande le vo. Rivalio se le man. Rande di mo. Le masondo le mokura viala. Rebekere de mos. Look, 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 look where Elijah responds to him. What did I do to you to make you go back? To the flesh. Go back to the demonic schedule. Go back to your own, your own will. Go back to your own ways. What did I do? Saints, Elijah didn't tell him, go kiss your mama. Go kiss your father. Go tell them goodbye. Elijah said, go back. Elijah is questioning him. Why are you going back to go kiss them? They are not a part of this schedule now that I have come in your life. When a prophet comes into your life, people are going to say things to downgrade the effectiveness of the prophet. They're going to call it an occult. They're going to call it brainwash. They're going to call it all type of names in order to take away the effectiveness of why the prophet come. Yes, the prophet came for brainwashing, came to wash your brain from all the evil it's been doing in the name of God. The prophet comes to wash your brain from all your forms of godliness, from all your traditions, from all your self-righteousness. That's filthy rags. Yes, the prophet come to wash your brains from all of your morals and your standards according to the flesh, according to this natural world and bring you into spiritual accomplishment. Yes, following a prophet is the prophet coming to take over the path of your life. Yes.
It wasn't until Saul met Samuel that now he's operating as a king. He wasn't a king 10 years ago. But Samuel is taking over his life. Samuel teaches him how to be a king. That's what the Bible says. Samuel anointed him. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. My goodness. This is powerful. What I'm speaking on here, let me tell you something. This is eternal. This is eternal. This is eternal. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 says this. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee. You see this here? 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. Saul did not know how to be king over God's people. Samuel came to teach him. That's what anoint him mean. I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to dominate your thinking. I'm going to rule how you see stuff. I'm going to introduce to you a mindset, a theology, a doctrine, a focus, a perspective, a, a method. See, your prophet comes into your life to anoint you. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee. Your prophet comes to anoint you. Now look what he says. To anoint you to be king over his people, over Israel. Now watch this. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Saints, how is Saul hearing the words of the Lord? Is he hearing it in his prayer closet? Is he hearing it in his devotion time? Is he hearing it in his time of prayer and fasting? No. Samuel is going to give him a pattern for his life and show him what is good and what is lovely and what is the schedule. Now, saints, this is so important because Saul's schedule was just to find his lost donkeys. So how is he now a king over a whole nation, over God's people? His intent was never to be king over God's people. His intent was to go find his donkeys. The prophet is giving him a new life, a new assignment. Now, imagine if Saul goes to Samuel and says, you know, I don't need this. I was doing better before I came. I was, I was doing bigger stuff before I came to this. No, you wasn't. Saul, you was looking for some donkeys. You was looking for some animals. Now you are over every animal in the land. Now you got power and authority over regions, over God's people. There is a shift and a change in what you were doing, a schedule change. Saints, isn't this powerful how I'm showing you in the word of God? How when the prophet comes to you, I'm showing you in the Bible. I'm showing, I'm showing you, I'm, I'm really giving you fresh revelation on this because you can actually see like God has been doing this from the beginning. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee. See, the prophet is doing their job to anoint you. If you leave, how, how they going to anoint you? If you disrespectful, how they going to anoint you? 
If you are in comparison with them, if you're competing with them, how are they going to anoint you? If you used to be a prayer warrior, so you know some things, how are they going to anoint you? You got to humble yourself. Humility is also detoxing yourself of former accomplishments so that you can learn afresh. I want you to think about that. Humility is also in submission. It is you detoxing yourself of former accomplishments so that you can be an excellent learner, so that you can soak in like a sponge everything that your prophet of God has given to you. And so you have to actually detox yourself of, of, the, of the pride of life. Like, you know what the pride of life really is? First John was talking about the pride of life. The pride of life is when you look at something and say, hey, this is what I accomplished. This is what I did. So I don't, I, don't, I don't need to learn here. I don't need to be taught here. I don't need to be told nothing. And it takes away your meekness. Whatever takes away your meekness grabs your weakness. If you're taking notes, write that down. Whatever takes away your meekness grabs your weakness. Because as long as you're operating in meekness, God can keep on supplying grace to you. And he can keep on giving you the ability to overcome and be more than a conqueror. But if you operate in rejecting that meekness, now you have to walk in weakness. And so you have to be a slave to the very things that you were supposed to rule over. You have to be a slave to the very things that you were supposed to dominate over. So Samuel said, the, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king. So saints, there's an anointing of kingship that's inside of Samuel. He gives it to Saul. Your prophet comes to teach you the kingly way. Your prophet comes to teach you your royalty. The prophet is there to teach you the God class, the, 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 the father class. Wow. I never, I never heard that before. The father class operating just like the father. Remember King Jesus said, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. So, so this is your father class. Now the prophet comes to show you your father class. So when your prophet is on the scene, They're showing you your, 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 your father class, the father's class. Your prophet is unlocking you to your father's class. Now, saints, I also want to say this to you. Your prophet cannot anoint you if you have, if you have a memory that you refuse to let go of so that you can receive renewal in your mind. If you don't want to renew your mind, Ephesians chapter four, the prophet can't anoint you because everything that you knew before the prophet comes, it didn't bring you into your destiny. So obviously you need new information. Listen to me. Listen to me. If the information you had was a changer, you would have changed. If the information you had was wealthy, you would have been wealthy. If the information you had was healthy, you would have been healthy. If the information you had was a soul deliverer, your soul would have been delivered. If it was a life organizer, your life would have been organized. If it was a fresh anointing, you would have had a fresh anointing. So you have to let go of the memory of what was old. Remember, old wineskins and new wineskins can't live together. They can't live together. The Lord Jesus began to say that the, 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 the wineskin will break apart. The wineskin will break apart if both Old and new mixed together is not going to work. You got to get a new wine skin so that wine can be poured into it. 
So the Lord not trying to keep you in what was. The Lord want to destroy what was so that you can receive what is. So that you could also be in position to enjoy what is to come.